those of you who got an invite, welcome to NerdProm. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all NERDS International. With the hyphen. Nerds International proudly presents... Welcome to the Dragons Are Real podcast. So, as you can tell by the intro, there's been some changes to the podcast. I've now joined the Nerds International Network, so a big thank you to Eric Lamaru for inviting me on. The Nerds International Network is a collection of shows and blogs um, on role-playing games, so check them out. Um, if you're into Savage Worlds, then I can highly recommend the Wild Die podcast. I've been listening to that for a few years. They have some great content on there. Um, for generic uh, RPGs, then there's the Murder Hobo Show. Um, he's got a podcast where he covers several RPGs and also a YouTube channel where he covers Tabletop Simulator. And Gary does some great stuff with Tabletop Simulator. So if you fancy having a look at that, then check that one out. If you want something a bit British, then we've got the 3T RPG podcast for some zany UK based RPG stuff. And there's a few other podcasts and RPGs, um, blogs to check out. So if you want to have a look at them, I'll put them all in the show notes. So thank you guys and for letting me join the Nerds International Network. I'm still going to be on Anchor, so you can still contact me in the usual way. It just means now that um, I will have the backing of the Nerds International Network and I can get a bit more advertising and uh, I'll be advertising some of their shows to try and spread the listeners. So let's see what we've got on today's show. So today I'm going to do a review of the Everyone RPG, uh, which is by Filigree Forge. Uh, now this uh, is going to be tough because um, I've got um, the family in the house today. Uh, they've been working all week, so this is the first weekend off, and they're listening to some music in the other room and blasting that out. Um, I tried to do it in the garden, but outside, one of my neighbours, I think he's trying to build the bridge over the River Kwai. So let's try and get on with this anyway, so and see how we get on. So the Everyone RPG is powered by the Barbarians of Lemuria. Now anybody that uh, knows me and has followed me on the Discord will know that um, I'm a big fan of Barbarians of Lemuria, which was a free 2D6 uh, system released many years uh, ago on the 1000 Monkeys, 1000 Typewriters website, whatever it's called, uh, as a free set of rules for doing the Codeless type games um, fighting in the land of Lemuria, and it was later released as a full-blown commercial product. Uh, there have been several iterations of it now, and so if you like simple RPG systems in um, fantasy, then check that out. So everyone is a generic modern uh, day version, um, which is based on the core of Barbarians of Lemuria and there's a generic system. So um, let's get on to um, what the core system is. So the core system is a 2d6 system. So basically you roll 2d6 and you add your attributes and if it's a non-combat uh, combat situation your career modifier or if it's a combat situation your combat ability and then we've got task modifiers that add to the dice rolls and basically you're looking for a total of nine plus to succeed so you get nine or more you succeed eight or lower and you fail and that is the core of the system so uh, nice and simple so let's have a look at character creation first so the core you have four core attributes strength agility mind and appeal and on character creation, you've got four points to spend between those four attributes. Uh, with the maximum you can put in any one attribute is three points. And you can 
uh, buy down atmos uh, your attributes as well but any of your one attributes may be minus one so you're going to have an array between minus one up to plus three after you've put your points into your attributes then you've got four combat abilities you've got initiative melee ranged and defense and again you've got four points to allocate amongst them the maximum of three and you can buy one down to minus one this is a slight change from the original barbarians of lemuria in barbarians of lemuria instead of having the initiative combat ability you had a brawl uh, ability um, and this is an option in everyone so obviously your your melee ability uh, ability is used in hand-to-hand -hand fighting your ranged ability is used in shooty weapons and your defense is your defense your dodging your ducking or your sidestepping so once you've assigned your points in combat abilities then you get to choose four careers for your heroes and there's a whole array of careers available in the book and it does give you some examples of which careers to use in which sort of setting so for example if you're doing a weird west setting you would choose careers like blacksmith bounty hunter brave cowboy doc drifter entertainer ex-slave farmer gambler grifter gunslinger inventor laborer lawman medicine man miner mountain man outlaw preacher soil dove soldier sorcerer trader and tycoon so for each setting you have you would customize the list of careers just like you did with abilities and your attributes you've got four ranks to spend between your four careers um, with a maximum starting of three and a minimum rank of zero now if you've ever played the old traveler game you can see some sort of resemblance to traveler with it being a 2d6 system and you have careers so once you've done your careers then you've got a number of derived attributes and these are derived from your previous so your life blood which is your how much you can absorb from punishment and wounding and it starts uh, with a value of 10 plus your strength attribute then there are hero points you start with five hero points this can be altered whether you want a more gritty or less gritty game then you have arcane points so if you have a character which has got some sort of um, sorcery then you have uh, arcane points and your arcane point start is 10 plus your rank in that career next up is faith points and if you have a character which is a religious career it's a priest then you will have faith points and that is equal to your rank in your career next up is psionic points and if you have a character with psionic career then you get a number of psionic points equal to 10 plus your might and your mind and your psionic career and then we have two optional derived attributes we have resolve so this is uh, your ability to take mental damage so it might be used in a game where this is important maybe a cthulhu type game and that is calculated in a similar way to lifeblood as 10 plus your mind and the final optional uh, derived ability is credit rating and this is um, how good you are buying and selling goods and wealth and this sort of thing and the way that is calculated it depends on the setting but usually it's a hero's mind plus the appeal plus the current career rank then finally you've got boons and flaws and these are like your edges and hindrances and savage worlds and you get one boon for free and if you take a second boon then you must take a, a flaw and these boons give you uh, advantages um, in certain situations so for example if you picked a grappler on a successful roll to attack you can restrain the target instead of causing them damage and there's a whole host of boons and a whole host of flaws to choose from from being old and young flaws uh, missing limbs so uh that is your character creation nice and simple just um, assigning some points and then choosing from some lists and you're ready to rock and roll as i said earlier it's a 2d6 system and you're adding your to your role your your points you put in your attribute and your career or your combat ability and um, any bonus or penalty dice if relevant now one change they have made to everyone over the previous barbarians of lemuria they've now added bonus and penalty dice and this is advantage and disadvantage so it's adding an extra dice to the roll 
uh, for a bonus and you keep the two highest or and you roll three dice if you have the penalty and keep the two lowest i'm not a fan of bonus and penalty dice um when it's a, a 2d6 system um don't know what it is it's it's okay if you're rolling one dice in a year taking the best of two but uh rolling three and taking the best of two uh, i've played a couple of times and so i probably wouldn't play with the bonus, bonus and penalty dice but hey there it's in the rules if you want to use it Besides your normal success of rolling nine or higher, then you have automatic success. So any time you roll a double six, you automatically succeed. It doesn't matter whatever else happens, you've done the impossible and succeeded. Same way as a double six is an automatic um, success, a snake eyes or double one is an automatic failure. And this means no matter what your bonus is, that you failed. If you do roll an automatic failure, the player can elect to convert this into a calamitous failure, which makes the failure even worse and puts the puts them in a greater disadvantage than you would normally be. And, but by choosing to, to convert it to a calamitous um, failure, then the hero is awarded hero points. And this is the usual way of getting hero points. Another change from the Barbarians of the Moria is they've given options for using different dice. So instead of rolling 2d6 requiring a, a 9 plus to uh, succeed, um, you can check, swap it out and have 2d10s. And if you're using 2d10s, you're looking for 13 plus to succeed. Or you can use 2d12s, looking 15 as your target number. And finally, there's the 3d6 option when if you prefer a more of a bell curve then you're looking at 12 plus is your automatic success and i think that's a, a nice addition um, for people that want to try some different uh, dice types in their games and change up a bit so what of hero points you've asked i heard you mentioned before that you can acquire hero points well you spend your hero points to affect the outcome of a situation so it might be you boost your success you defy your death and it's for those um, moments where your hero does something like a, a screen character and defies all your uh, odds and does something far better than they should do by spending these hero points so as if you're not a guest already then this is a cinematic game it's a very light light game but it's quite cinematic now in combat when you take damage Damage is a d6 system, obviously, and it can be you roll a d6 and the number of d6 and take the lowest result, a number of d6 and take the highest result, to maybe a mid result, and if you're using melee weapon, then you add your strength. And any damage that is um, taken, that you rolled, is your armour, it gives you protection, so it reduces the amount of damage, and then the damage is applied to your lifeblood and when your lifeblood gets to zero you are squished and you can certainly see it everywhere and how it's been shaped since the early barbarians of memory by one rules because you've got rules for things like dramatic challenges um, hazards journeys a host of other stuff it's been added in social situate social interaction so there's uh, lots of rules been added to cover lots of situations now and take the old bob irons and lemuria rules sort of bang up to date obviously because it's a modern version there's rules for hacking there's rules for vehicles and uh, weapons from modern weapons to old weapons so it is a really generic set of rules uh, covered all periods there's sections on powers and uh, arcane powers psionics um, and all that sort of stuff. Now one of my favourite parts of Barbarians of Remoria and has been carried over into everyone is the magic system. Magic is divided into four areas, your cantrips, your first level, second level and third level and any spellcaster can cast any of them at any time so even as a starting magician you can cast a third level spell. However there are no spell lists, all there are is uh, you describe to the GM what you want to do and you describe um, with the help of the GM what um, magnitude of spell you are going to do and then the GM will set a difficulty and then you have a number of arcane points to spend and for example if you're doing a cantrip it's going to be between one or two points and if you're doing a third levels um, arcane it's going to be 15 points 
So it's quite good then that um, you your cantrips are your very basic spells allowing the caster to conjure a brief pool of light distance after all those minor things. Then we move on to first magnitude and these are activities that anyone with the right training equipment could manage. Um, so it might be gliding up the side of a cliff. Um, it's something that a normal person would achieve eventually. Then we move on to second magnitude. Uh, these are effects that would be impossible for a single person to normally achieve. So uh, something like destroying uh, a wall is an example. And then your third magnitude arcana is um, the, the sort of spells that bring around natural disaster and terrible curses spanning generations. So I've always liked the magic system in Barbarians of Lemuria and again that's carried over. Um, then it's added psionic powers, so you've got things like te telekinetic and um, telepathy, te telekinesis, that sort of thing. And then the other one it's added are divine powers, so these are for your, your priests, cult, um, cultists, shamans, that sort of thing. Um, now another area that Bob Iron's Memorial has always shined in, and again it's been carried over to everyone, is in their bestiary. There is one. But there isn't, because you see, all bad guys are divided into three types. There are rabble, which are your normal day mooks, your hordes. They're the sort of things that have got sort of zero in all their abilities and they've got between one and three lifeblood. Then you've got your toughs. So those are your lieutenants, um, those sorts of things. Uh, and they've got between not to two points in attributes and combat abilities and uh, their lifeblood is five plus their strength score. And then finally you've got rivals which are very much like um, you design them like you do a PC when they've got not to four in their abilities and the lifeblood is 10 plus strength. And basically what you're doing as the GM is you're eyeballing it so that, that, that um, you might say that uh, you're going to do a lieutenant, uh, you give him a point in strength, um, a point in mind, um, two points in melee because they got in hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, and sort of seven points of lifeblood. So they're very generically done so it's very easy once you get to know the system is to design um, an adversary on the fly. Everyone adds then um, some advice then for what to do between adventures and then at the back it's got a quick urban fantasy setting called True Brit Vampire Slayers. So this gives you an idea of how to use the system, the sort of the careers that are available, what booms and floors to use. Uh, it gives you some sample creatures, so in this case it's vampires and werewolves. It's good that the rules describe it all and then it gives you an example of how to actually sit down and do it at the back. So that is everyone. I was and am still a big fan of the Barbarians of Lemuria. Everyone, it's a good step at the Barbarians pitting it forward, but in my mind it's overcomplicated it in many areas and added a lot more rules which I don't think are needed. But I mean it's cheap enough. You can always take the bits and pieces that you want out of it and just add it to your Bob Aarons of Lemoria. Um, that would be uh, is probably what I will do. So I think it was the last episode I mentioned uh, Runehammer is bringing out his uh, virtual tabletop. I've now got access to that tabletop now. It's a nice, uh, simple tabletop. Um, it's not designed to compete with Roll20 or Foundry or Map to Learn them. It's something that's lightweight, it's got no instructions, and basically it's a map and tokens and some dice, and it's nice and easy to set up. Um, so I've been playing with that. I'm going to do a YouTube video on that 
in the next couple of days so check that one out and uh, you can have a walk through and see what it's all about at the moment it's still in beta the top tier patrons for rune hammer the immortals have got access to that at the moment and eventually once they find the bugs out and that it will go to all of the patrons so if um that interests you for just a dollar a, a month then you'll have access to it now whether it gets um put out further than that to the public after that it all depends on the scaling because at the moment as i said it's just going to be for patrons and we'll see if the servers can handle the the traffic and the data uh, before they decide whether they push that out but whatever it is at the moment it doesn't mean to say that this is how it's going to end up but um yeah i'll do a, a walk through that i've got uh, next saturday i'm going to be running my, my flash gordon game in icrpg for the audio dungeon lot and i'm going to use rune hammer vtt and give it some um, combat uh, experience and see how that one pans out uh, so that's for that one so i think that's going to be a wrap for this episode so um still got some more reviews coming um yes i haven't forgotten the judge dread and i've just got my hands on the new strontium dog pdf for the um, 2000 ad uh, rpg now i'm not a fan of that 2000 ad rpg although i haven't reviewed it yet so you wouldn't know that but um the strontium dog has got some nice background fluff in there which i'm going to port over to one of uh, my other systems yeah waiting to hear on that one so that's all for this episode and i'll catch you all on the flip side you've been listening to the dragons are real podcast for more information check out our website at petejones.neocities.org our blog at dragonsarealpodcast.tumblr.com and we're also on YouTube. Thanks for listening.